My next take has to do with another blue blood program. That would be Notre Dame. And you know what? I don't have anything to say uh, badly about a Notre Dame because Marcus Freeman is out here rolling differently. This is what I wanted. Now, you'll know, even before I was privileged enough to work at Fox Sports, I'm all ahead on the Marcus Freeman train. Love what that dude was as a defensive coordinator, and I was saying, somebody give him a good job, okay? He took the job as defensive coordinator at Notre Dame. Brian Kelly decided to lick a gift course in the mouth and took a job at LSU, and then Jack Schwarbick did the thing I did not think he would do. He elevated the one guy he could elevate to get me on board with Notre Dame. All right. I haven't been on board with Notre Dame since 2004. I was a junior in high school the last time I was rolling deep with Notre Dame because it's just not a part of my constitution. It's normally not how I want to get down. But when you got guys like Carlisle Holiday and Arnez Battle and Ty Willingham rocking Notre Dame, yeah, you got me too. I'm on that team, all right? And now you've done something I think that could be even cooler with Marcus Freeman because it's not just Marcus Freeman, as you well know. It's also Tommy Reese. So you got the two up-and-coming dudes working together to keep Notre Dame where they have been, which is basically being in the college football playoff every other year, even if they get destroyed in the college football playoff. You figure it out with Tyler Buckner. You figure it out with Drew Pine. You'll be okay. But those dudes also wanted to keep Tommy Reese around. You've added some outstanding Players and coaches to the staff. Marcus Freeman got baptized by fire against Oklahoma State in the Fiesta Bowl. Was in that game, by the way. Had a chance to win it. Okay. Now, the other reason I'm really on board with this train is because Marcus Freeman and Jack Schwarbick did something I did not think that they would do ever at Notre Dame. It's not just that they scheduled an FCS opponent. It's that they scheduled an HBCU. And to sweeten it just a little bit further, scheduled another Ohio State alumnus to play. You'll know Notre Dame will play Tennessee State in 2023. Now, I thought it was interesting that there were a number of notable and not so notable Notre Dame fans who were beside themselves angry with this. So you've heard me refer to associate producer Tyler Wojak. He is Notre Dame alumnus and huge Notre Dame fan. So I would ask him straight up, yo, what am I missing about this? And there's a couple things, right? The first one is that Notre Dame and USC had been the only teams not to play an FCS opponent in the history of the sport. Now, because Notre Dame is scheduled Tennessee State, it's just USC. That's number one. We'll get to that here in a second. Number two is you're bringing down your schedule competition. Now, this is the part that I didn't give a lot of thought to until Tyler brought it up. Since being in this open marriage with the ACC, because I refuse to call Notre Dame a conference member of ACC because they still play an independent schedule, they are getting what they think are inferior games at Notre Dame. They got lucky with Cincinnati last year in that Cincinnati was very, very, very good. And then they took an L, right, at Notre Dame Stadium. It happens. But for the most part, it's also looking around and going, what else do we have here? Okay? So Notre Dame is going to do the peak Notre Dame thing in 2023 and go play a football game in Dublin, Ireland. Okay, fine. The next week they'll be back, and that was going to be a bye week until Marcus Freeman told Jack Swarbrick, I don't want a bye week when we come back. I want to play somebody somewhere. And this is where I kind of want to give Jack Swarbrick credit, but not too much credit because scheduling is – a team effort, number one. And number two, you got to be looking at me when you schedule Tennessee State. But Jack Swarbick was once on the Indianapolis Sports Commission back in the 80s, back when they used to play a game called the City Circle Classic. Tennessee State used to play in that game. And he remembers fondly what that game represented outside of the caliber of football being played. The quote that he gave was, the alumni coming to our city, the bands, the game, it's always been a goal to try and bring some of that here if we could figure out a way to do it. Now, that is the part where I'm going to kind of dunk on him just a little bit. You could have always brought an HBCU to Notre Dame. 
nothing to stop you. You could have scheduled Jackson State in the 60s when they had Walter Payton or 70s when they had Walter Payton. In the 60s when they were destroying people. You could have scheduled, hey, hell, Willie Gordon in Jackson State when they were destroying people. You could have scheduled Florida A&M when they were destroying people. You didn't want the smoke or you didn't think the juice is worth the squeeze. One or the other. Maybe some version of both because I dare say if Notre Dame had scheduled Jackson State, there would have been a fight for the rights to that game because Jackson State is about its business right now, and they have one of the most visible head coaches in the sport, so much so that we would have already known Jackson State was going to be going up to Notre Dame to get a W, okay? Whereas Jerome Bettis got to ask Eddie George straight up, do you think you can win this game? He's like, I absolutely think we can. I love me some Eddie George. He's very cool, man. He was on this show, and I believe that he's going to turn Tennessee State into a winner along with Dr. Mickey Allen. But you're the only person at Tennessee State right now, I should say, outside of Tennessee State, there ain't nobody else to think y'all going to win that game. If you go win it, I'll be the first person here to say you was right and I was wrong, but keep it 100. Y'all get paid a lot of money to go play that game. And you're hoping you're going to catch the jet lag Notre Dame. And that's what people would say, right? You caught a jet lag Notre Dame, and Notre Dame would say, even so, we shouldn't lose to a Tennessee State, but fabricated futures and all of that. I also want to point out that you're going to have two black head coaches playing against each other at Notre Dame Stadium. It might have happened during the Tyrone Willingham part of the Notre Dame experience, but I don't remember it, right? It's interesting to me because outside of like Stanford, you really don't have a whole lot of black coaches at these predominantly white institutions, right? Like Stanford was just kind of real in that it went from like Denny Green to like Ty Willingham, Jim Harbaugh in there a little bit, and then to David Shaw, right? It was kind of surreal there, but Stanford also does not make any qualms about what they do. They want to be Notre Dame on the West Coast. They're about education. They had a quarterback who was a Heisman finalist and a number one overall pick who studied architectural engineering, which, you know, ordinarily I would dunk on, but seeing as N'Kobe Dean studied mechanical engineering, won the Buckus Award, you can't do that anymore because the dudes has just come out this smart over the last 10 years. It's like that. I also want to point to Notre Dame has Ohio State to start the season. If Notre Dame manages to beat an Ohio State that I know is going to be looking to go hunt people, I think everybody's going to be talking about Marcus Freeman the way I'm talking about Marcus Freeman. I think everybody's going to be all for it. And I'm here for that as well because that's going to be an epic game. I love energy on the sideline. I love watching a college football coach change the tenor of what you do to further suit the kind of program he wants to be. That is what uh, Marcus Freeman has done, and that is what Jack Swarbrick has allowed Marcus Freeman to do. Kudos all around to a team and a program that normally I'm just with you about. But now I'm with them about. Strange. When you start thinking about including other people into your thing, they choose to join you. Hi. Hey, Notre Dame. Now, you know, we're going to get it chopped and screwed up there in South Bend and see what y'all really working with. Thanks for watching this video. And remember, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any other videos on the number one ranked show YouTube channel.